Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on the power amplifier requirements for 5G communication systems. Uh, I assume that you have some background in analog RF design and also knowledge of communication system theory as well to an extent. If you are new to this channel please subscribe and uh, like this video and also read the description for up to date, uh, updates uh, uh, of our YouTube channel and also on our website. The website is www.poweramplifier.net. So uh, let's get started with this uh, short tutorial. And the first slide I would like to show is uh, the graph between the output power requirement for a power amplifier or a transmitter and the data rate in different wireless standards. Here we one can see that uh, there is some similarity and some differences with the evolution of uh, the different wireless standards. As we can see, if starting from 1G, it was uh, very at significantly low frequency, low data rate, and the uh, output power was around 30 dBm. So, for obvious reasons, as we move forward to 2G, to 3G, to 4G, and then to 5G, the data rate keep on increasing like 14.4 uh, kbps to 10 times 144 then 2 times 384 and then it reaches the megabits per second range. Uh, with respect to power amplifier design uh, we can see that the output power requirement lies in the range of uh, 30 dBm plus minus 3 dBm in most of the cases except VLAN, WLAN and WiMAX. So for cellular communications which has to communicate with the base station, uh, here we can see that output power is 30 dBm, here is also 30 dBm, for G GSM is 30, around 33 dBm, and CDMA is also around 27 dBm, edge also in the same range, and then WCDMA. So the reason the output power lies in this range is the fact number one the device has to communicate with the base station so it needs some significant amount of power and the second most important reason is that since the device is a handheld device so it has limited battery power so it's not possible to have a handheld device which can transmit like uh, 40 dbm right so it will lose all its battery and it will also violate the spectral mask so for these constraints the output power always lies happen to lie i would say happen to lie in this region and then when we come to wlan obviously because it's an indoor the indoor for obviously it's an indoor communication system so the output low but of course the you know, the requirement on the the linearity is still there which we will talk in some other videos but in this video you can get an overview of the output power requirements for a power amplifier uh, with respect to different uh, generation of wireless standards so the question is what will happen in 5g or what is the requirement in 5g so when it comes to 5g in terms of and the two main differences are one is obvious difference is the frequency and the other thing is that it has very wide bandwidth right so it has to transmit very high data rate so the bandwidth requirements are very challenging and uh, but the similarity is that it also has a peak to average power ratio somewhat similar to 4g not 100 percent but somewhat similar to 4g in the sense that it it has to meet the signals which have very high peak to average power ratio and high peak to average power ratio if you are a power amplifier designer the obvious things which come to your mind is the torque amplifier or envelope tracking or eer type of architectures and you are right in in 5g these are very hot topics and uh, which we will discuss in some other videos so now we come to this till 4g standards what are the requirements and then we go to the slide of the 5g so here we can see that all the all the standards lies in the cellular wlan wimax is still 6 gigahertz right it starts from 800 megahertz for gsm then goes to 1.8 gigahertz for pieces and then wcdma for virus and it goes to 2.45 gigahertz and wimax also between uh, 2 and 4 gigahertz when it comes for when it comes to output power again as i said earlier it lies in this uh, 35 33 28 27 dbm range which is like half watt one watt two watt of output power for a, a handheld device for wireless LAN, the wireless router is around 16 to 20 dBm and WiMAX is uh, 22 to 25 dBm. The modulation scheme also very important which translates to the uh, signal at the input of the amplifier like GMSK, uh, CCK, OFDM and from the perspective of power amplifier design we should be concerned about its characteristics like uh, peak to average power ratio which matter for us. Here in this slide I would like to show about how the 5G standard is distributed among different geographical areas so uh, 5G can be divided 
divided roughly into three areas. One is the low frequency cells, the other is the high frequency or sub 6 gigahertz cells and the third is the millimeter wave cells. So low frequency cells are like 600 uh, megahertz. This is something similar to the traditional GSM, not 100% but somehow similar 600 megahertz and then 700 megahertz in EU, Japan and China don't have that band. And then this is a very important band which is the sub 6 gigahertz band. It ranges from 2.5, 3.35, 3.55, 3.75.9 gigahertz somewhat similar in eu 3.4 5.9 same as in china and similar in japan as well and then there is a very special band which is the millimeter wave band which will correspond to millimeter wave cells and these are really high frequencies these are in millimeter wave frequencies or high microwave frequencies the range is from 24 to 28 gigahertz 37 to 48 gigahertz and 64 for 70 64 to 71 gigahertz and in usa all these bands are implemented while in eu only this band is uh, so far allowed which is 24.5 to 27.5 gigahertz which is a 3 gigahertz uh, quite large band as to say and then in china also 24.5 to 27.5 and 37 to 40 37.5 to 32 as for japan goes it has only one somewhat similar to eu like 27 to 29.5 gigahertz so uh, the main point here is that the 5g has a wide range it starts from the sub rf range in megahertz goes to rf and microwave range from 2.5 to 6 gigahertz and then it goes all the way to millimeter wave range from 2.4 to 71 gigahertz so it covers the whole spectrum almost from megahertz all the way to somehow to 100 gigahertz slightly less than 100 gigahertz when it comes to our power requirement for 5g cells it's like this well, like as i showed you in earlier slide that 5g is a wide range so the the cell type cells are divided into different types like femtocell pico cell micro cell macro cell and they correspond to different uh, rf rf output powers like uh, for femtocell is 0 to 24 dbm pico cell is 24 to 30 and micro cell is 30 to 40 dbm and macro cell is 40 to 47 dbm so femtocell will have like uh, 1 to 20 users, uh, users and the uh, output power will be less than 20 dB and picocell will be 220 to 100 users less than 20 dB output power. Microcell will be 100 to 1000 users less than 27 dB and macrocell will have high power like greater than 27 dB number of users will be greater than 1000. So when it comes to power amplifier design we can see the range lies from less than 20 to greater than 27 dB and here the challenge is of uh, the power amplifier design lies that which architecture is suitable and uh, how to meet those challenging constraints from the circuit perspective so i, I will discuss those in the later videos so and that's all for today video please uh, have a look at description for more info uh, thank you very much